Let's get to it, boys. First up, let's head to the NFC East. Dak Prescott came into the link having won three straight against the Eagles, scoring 40-plus points each time, and he was 7-1 and one in his last eight starts against Philly, which is sort of hard to believe. And on Sunday, Cowboys outgoing the Eagles 163-14 to 14 in the fourth quarter, but found a way to Cowboys it up late. They had three scoreless drives in the fourth quarter that ended in Philly's 30-yard line. So it's hard to say when you vocalize it, including the game's final play, a third and 26 from the Philly 27 that gained – Exactly 23 yards as time expired. A touchdown there, and the Cowboys win. Instead, the Eagles hold on, eke out the 28-23 victory, and move to 8-1. and one. Now they have a two-and-a-half game lead on Dallas in the division. Brinson, overall, felt pretty good about the Cowboys' effort and feel differently than I have in previous iterations of this team. But where are you in this loss that probably should have been a win for old Jerry's Cowboys team? You know when uh, Stephen A. Smith – does a thing where he like puts on a cowboy's hat or a cowboy hat and he prances around and he laughs and cackles about how the cowboys lost. And um you can tell that he's really enjoying when you know it's like entirely stupidity based that the cowboys fall to the Eagles or to really anyone. Um sort of felt like this might be one of those games, right? Where Stephen A. Smith is gonna soak up the ending of it because the Cowboys, it did feel like the Cowboys should have won or at least should have covered or, you know, should have been right there at, at the at the end of the game. I mean, they had a chance, obviously. Um, they threw, but like it was kind of summed up by that final play, right? It is unnecessarily uh, far, third and 26, and they threw just short of the end zone. Um, and it felt like at, especially at the end there, sort of like the final like drive, um, when they they didn't you know, the Dak they, they don't spike the ball they don't realize what's going on like they don't have any timeouts left so Dak has to just run a play and throws it uh, deep left and out of the end zone and then you have five seconds left um, because you got sacked I believe it sort of felt like a lot like a Mike McCarthy moment in the playoffs and I think that's maybe my biggest concern not necessarily with Dak Prescott who I thought looked very good in this game. To me, it feels like the Cowboys are the NFC's version of the Chargers in the Ooh. sense that they just find the craziest ways to lose that just blow your mind. And I don't think we think about them all the time because you have weirdo teams like the Chargers or the Falcons, uh, like the Lions used to be, that just always found these weird ways to lose. But when you look at the Cowboys, this team, they had a first in goal at Philadelphia's six-yard line with 27 seconds left. You have to go six yards, and you win this game. And you have 27 seconds. You literally do anything you want. You have time to run four plays, and somehow they take a first and goal at the six-yard line, and they're running a play third and goal from the 27-yard line is their last play. How do you manage to do that? I mean, we know how they manage to do that because we watched it all because there was a false start. Dak got sacked. Is Brinton mentioned, and they got called for, I think, a delay of game. A delay of yes. game? Like, what is going on? What are you doing? It is unbelievable. And so I feel like this happens to the Cowboys a lot in big situations, which makes Breach Bot sad uh, <laughs> because I want to, I always think this, they're going to put all this behind them. They're finally going to get past this moment, and then they never do. Games like this happen. And they just choke in the biggest moments against good teams. This doesn't happen against bad teams. It's only against good teams. And so, I mean, if you're a Cowboys fan, I does it get more frustrating than this? I don't think it does. They did beat the Chargers breach, just so we're clear, by three points. Now, that is a bad team, as you just alluded to. And look, I, I get what you're saying. I feel better about where this Cowboys team is now than they have been historically under under Mr. McCarthy. But again, that's a game that you should have won. Now the lead is two and a half in the division against an Eagles team that continues to have hiccups, but continues to hit their stride as they have hiccups, which is sort of a weird thing to say. Uh, they got after it in terms of the pass rush late. You guys talked about some of the sacks there and the pressures. So I, I don't know. I like there are no moral victories in, in the NFL, but I feel like this is still a playoff team. They are five and three. Oh, yeah. um, they weren't going to win the division. I don't think. I mean, even if they win this game, I still think that the the, the Eagles are the favor are, are the favorite down the stretch, especially as, as Jalen Hurts gets healthier. But um, I don't know. I, I I feel better about this team than I do the Chargers team, which was my Super Bowl pick, as it turns out. Yeah, I mean, the very first year, by the way, that I was uh, the, I was at CBS Sports, I picked the Chargers and the Cowboys to meet in the Super Bowl. Um, oh my god! 
<laughs> yeah, right. And the breach, I think you I think you nailed it. It um it felt like it just felt like the ending to one of those San Francisco playoff games in the last two years where it's like a delay of game with five seconds left. Like you're trying to run a third and two, you're trying the the specific play is you know, you you're third and twenty-one on the Philly twenty-two. You have with five seconds left. You have one play. You're running one play, and you got to get twenty-two yards into the end zone, score a touchdown, and you get a delay of game. Like, and that's it sums everything up so perfectly. I I think if they'd won this game, the division was definitely in the realm of possibility. Um, but Jalen Hurts said almost exactly what you said, Wilson, which was he said we haven't had a complete game yet. And we just sort of find a way to win. He's like, this group is very resilient, et cetera, et cetera. I think I think there's a lot of truth to that. Um, the Eagles, Jalen Hurts been a little banged up. I mean, they, they do just keep finding ways to win. Like it feels like they should be five and three, not eight and one. The so, Eagles are, are eight and one, though. You know, like so it's I'm not worried about the Eagles at all. It feels like no. the Eagles are to win this division, be the first repeat champ in 19 years, and <laughs> and, and like you just said, Brenton Hurts said it is they're playing somewhat ugly football and they're still winning. And so once they get their A game going, they're going to be almost impossible to beat if they can ever get it going as long as Hurts is banged up. And even though I compared the Cowboys to the Chargers as far as the way they lose, uh, I would also compare them to the Dolphins, which we'll talk about later. But in the That's sense, they're really good comp for the playoffs, they can't beat good teams. They played two big oh, yeah. games, the 49ers and the Eagles. And they lost both of them. And that's it. Those, I think those are the only two teams they play that currently have a winning record. So you beat up on the bad teams. That will get you to the playoffs. But then who knows uh, you know, what's going to happen in the playoffs because you can't beat good teams. The Bridge, eight, they all eight, can't nine, be the Steelers. Oh, sorry. Oh, so the 8-9-10 seeds in the NFC, Washington 4-5, and five, Atlanta 4-5, and five, Tampa 3-5. and five. So like Dallas, even with this loss at 5-3, and three, you still feel really, really good about their postseason chances. I feel yeah. good about Dak Prescott, too, by the way. So the last yeah. three times against the Eagles, which is sort of crazy, they've scored at least 40 points in those games. Bonkers, number one. 3-0 and in those games coming into Sunday's action. Also bonkers. Uh, Dak Prescott's the only quarterback since 1950 with 75% completion percentage, three passing touchdowns in three straight games against a single opponent. Uh, on Sunday, he only completed 65% of his passes, but did go for 374, three touchdowns. Again, no interceptions. CeeDee Lamb continues to do his thing. Got some other players involved finally, which was nice to see in the past game. On the other side, A.J. Brown continues to do his thing. Devonta Smith got into the end zone finally. Um, I do wonder about some of the injuries. We saw a couple of uh, defensive backs go out late for um, Philly. I think they both came back, Slay and um, one other. One other. Uh, Bradbury got hurt late. I, I don't. And Bradbury came... came back as well, I think. Oh, he did? Um, okay, okay, yeah. And the thing is, also, I mean, we're crushing that last drive. But Reed Blankenship made an incredible tackle against Luke Schoonmaker, uh, Luke Schoonmaker at the one-inch line. And, and Breach, you put a picture in our little chat room there that, that Luke might have got punched in the old family jewels as he went down at the at the one-inch line there. But no, before the ball got there, he got punched possibly in the family jewels. Yeah, but the the, the ball didn't cross. One ball didn't cross the uh, the goal line. Two others may have. It didn't count. <laughs> uh, so, the cow, I mean, I... I get it, but I don't feel bad about this game. Like, I felt terrible about the way the Steelers won on Thursday night because I'm a Steelers homer, like to the point where I was, I had to apologize to Musso for, <laughs> for yelling at him. <laughs> but this game, I was like, ah, I, no horse in the fight, but I was like, okay, or no dog in the fight. I was like, okay, they, I get it. This isn't the typical way that uh, it's not like the the scramble on fourth and forever in the playoffs, as you talk about the playoff losses, for instance, against the 49ers a few years ago with Dak. This felt what? different. Yeah. It, yeah. And it, it but it does. I mean, it feels like it. This game just sort of sums up both teams, like how they've played or how they've sort of won or lost games so far this season, right? Like the Eagles, improbably are eight and one, but they are, and they just find ways to keep winning. And it's like the Cowboys are improbably five and three, but they are, and they like lose to the Cardinals, and they've been to such a, a different team on the home in terms of the home and road splits. I was kind of funny too, by the way, at the end, where it's like. The um the the Eagles got the ball back. Uh, I can't remember if it was a was it a, a a fumble recovery, but however they got the ball back and the fans started chanting "Cowboys suck, Cowboys suck," and then all of a sudden, like the Eagles committed a bunch of penalties and the Cowboys had the ball like right back in in position to like steal the victory. Yeah, DeAndre Swift uh, took the handoff, ran into AJ Brown, fumbled it. They were lucky to get that recovery late. So it was a whole circus of uh 
calamities for me to make up a phrase.